Ring, I beg your pardon, for the eagerly awaited Ryan DF4 match between Coachford and Dundero. Teams lining out as follows. Dundero. Number one, Craig Hackett. Number two, Fergal Riley. Number three is Connor Hagerty. Four is Sean O'Brien. Five, Niall McCarthy. Six is Ian Costello. Seven is Connor Stallard. Number eight is Cronin Riley. Number nine is Cian Hackett. Number ten is Killian O'Brien. Number 11, Connor Buckley. 12 is Oliver Connor. 13 is Colm O'Connell. 14 is Jack Henderson. 15, David O'Donovan. 16, Andrew Kelly. And number 18 is Jordan O'Connell. 19 is Michael Cronin. 20 is Stephen O'Leary. 21 is Thomas Kelly. 22 Andrew O'Brien. 23 is Paul Curtin. And 24 is Owen Power. The codes for team. Number one, Mark O'Flynn. Number two is David Murphy. Three is Christopher Denny. Four is John Crowley. Five is Eamon Murphy. Six is Sam Lynch. Seven is Aidan Barry Murphy. Eight is Dara Ring. Nine is Jack Crowley. Ten is Kieran Barrett. Eleven is Alan Hogan. Twelve is Daniel Wilson. Thirteen is Owen Hurley. Fourteen Richard Byrne. Fifteen Ian Max 
Sweeney. 16, Owen Lynch. 17, Gavin O'Reilly. Gavin O'Reardon. 18, Vincent Lucy. 19 is Ivan McCaffrey. 20 is Johan Olivier. 21 is Patrick Sheehan. 22 is Sean O'Halloran Crowley. 23 is Edonon O'Reevig. 24 is Aidan O'Shaughnessy. 25 is James Lynch. 26 is Marinus De Beer. 27 is Bossy Olivier. 28 is Colin Crowley. 29 is Dylan Manning. 30 is Kieran Driscoll. 31, Brian McSweeney. And 32 is Dylan Merrick. And our referee for today's game out there in the middle of the field is Desi Mellerick from Goggins Hill National School. Lads, would you move over a small bit? there as the referee prepares for the throw in we're looking at some of the coach for supporters excited and exuberant before this eagerly awaited clash sporting the famed green and white and equally vociferous will be there as I'm looking at a group of supporters from Dundera National School down there close to Kinsale with a great tradition in Skeena Skull We're looking now at uh, the grandfather and uh, I, I think the mother of Alan Hogan, the number 11 from Coatsford and indeed our uh, video man here, our well-known video man Brendan Barry sends his regards to Nancy Hogan and wants Nancy to know that he misses her very much from Parky Ring today. He's right for this one, yeah. Okay. Referee Desi Mellerick throws in the ball and the game is on and it's Aidan Barry Murphy driving a long one towards the Dundiaro goal, running back to claim it, one of the Dundiaro defenders there, uh, difficult to see who it is at the moment, in fact it's the number two, that's Fergal Riley, Fergal Shepherds it over the line, the ball goes out wide, first wide ball for the coach for buys, 11 aside here in Parkier Ring, the field looking very very well after the good summer, unfortunately the weather has broken in the last day or two but holding off today, we'll see how it goes, long delivery from the Dundera number five uh, that's Niall, Niall McCarthy in the direction of uh, the coach for this opposite number for a coach for this Eamon Murphy good ball from Eamon Murphy towards David Murphy named at number two but are very much operating in the forward line cut out by the full back the full back there is Connor Connor Hagerty doesn't manage to gather the ball a little bit of a shamozzle developing the coach for vice should be favoured to get this he bends his back gets it up in the second attempt doesn't get it up a lot of commitment there but the referee spots a hand on the ground and he's giving a free the free in is to Coatsford and an early chance for Dara, Dara Ring. Dara right for the kick, drives it long, drives it beautifully in the direction of the goal, straight and through, over the bar, and in the early stages of this match, Coatsford lead. Conditions that good, the wind was blowing strongly here this morning and looking at the flags on the opposite side of the field, it seems to be favouring the Coatsford boys and that, uh, that kick certainly seemed to float over the bar. But here come Dundera, not to be deterred, it's Connor, Connor Stallard bearing down on goal. Ball comes up from the hop, gives a nice ball inside to the number six. I think that's Ian Costello, a lovely kick from Ian Costello, but unfortunately it goes just to the right and narrowly wide. Score remains, one point to no score. Goalkeeper today for uh, Coachford is Mark O'Flynn. And Mark, 
decides to go towards the sideline. Very wide pitch here, an intelligent use of the ball from him. And he picks out Eamon Murphy, who's had a good start to this game. Not a great kick on this occasion. And it's cut off by Ian. Ian Costello drives it towards his inside forward line and touches uh, um, to Killian O'Brien but Killian is beaten by Eamon Murphy and the clearance is a good one but it only goes as far as Sean O'Brien Sean pans it very intelligently to Connor Stallard Connor soloing up the field well he steady himself for a shot he goes he takes another step he strikes it beautifully he strikes it right foot it straight and true and the sides are level Connor Stallard already very prominent in this game a second good run from him fine strong rangy player in the middle of the field and Mick Creedon and Helen Keller the Dundere mentors will be anxious that he inflicts some damage on Coatsford. The kick out again goes towards the sideline uh, this sets Marks, Mark O'Flynn's kick out towards the sideline on the far side of the field but this time it eludes the number 9 over there that's uh, um, it's, it's, it's not in fact the number 9 we go, it is over there that's I'm not sure we'll come back to that in a minute. Play goes on Dundero in possession Sean O'Brien. The block is good on Sean O'Brien, but racing back is Connor Hagerty. Connor is under a lot of pressure from Kieran Barrett. Can he get a clearance out? Kieran uh, looks like he's beaten him. It, it hasn't. The ball breaks loose and it breaks as far as Niall McCarthy. Niall is fouled and a free out for Dundara and a chance for them to relieve their line. Score remains one point each. The number, the number nine um, from Coachford is is Jack Crowley. I can't actually see if Jack is in the field over there at the moment and we'll come back to that later on like I said. Meanwhile on with the play. It's in the possession of Coachford and it's Dara. Dara Ring the point scorer. Turns inside. Toe to hand. Lovely style this man has. Drives it across the ball but a good half black block there. I think it's by Connor Stallard and the ball clear towards the far side of the field towards Niall McCarthy. Niall under pressure uh, from Kieran Barrett. The ball, uh, the referee, I think, is giving a sideline on the far side of the field, and the sideline will be to the Dundera boys. That's a great catch in the middle of the field by Connor. Soloing up the field, strong, rangy player. The ball hung up nicely for him. He's still going. Someone will have to come to meet him here. Will he take the shot from there? He won't. He's going. A nice little hand pass inside to the Ivor Shea Ian. Ian Costlin. A good kick from Ian Costlin. A dangerous kick. Unfortunately for the keeper, Marco Flynn, it was one of those terrible kicks for a goalkeeper, but a very good kick from the forward, just underneath the crossbar. Mark got his fingertips, but couldn't stop it going into the back of the net, and Dundera lead by 1-1 one, one to a single point. And here they come again, Connor Stallard, making a huge impression in the early stages of this game. Under pressure from Aidan Barry Murphy, but gets a deep ranging kick in. The hands go up, it's in the hand of the number 10. Great block, a great bit of goalkeeping by Marco Flynn. Picked up the ball on the rebound at the second attempt, a attempt and a highly intelligent clearance towards the near side of the field. They're fighting to the nail for it. Alan Hogan, the aforementioned Alan Hogan, whose grandmother Nancy unfortunately couldn't be there. Alan is fouled on this occasion and the ball goes, uh, it will be a free, the free will be to the coach for boys. Long free, delivered towards the number two, the number two. Uh, is David Murphy. Good turn by David. Can he deliver it inside? He sees a point scoring opportunity. He strikes it well in towards the direction of his corner forward, Killian O'Brien. But unfortunately for Killian, he's just not able to keep that in play. And the ball goes harmlessly to the right and wide. Score remains one goal and a point for Dundero, one point uh, for the boys from Coachford. Goalkeeper Craig Hackett kicks it towards the near side of the field. Picked up beautifully. Uh, by Niall McCarthy who's playing a very very good game and drives the ball as far as Cronin Riley Cronin toe to hand again gets a good delivery and cross field ball under pressure that reaches his inside forward that inside forward is Keen Hackett lovely ball from Ian Ian to Ian, Ian, Ian Costello Ian takes too many turns there referee Desi Mellerick uh, penalises him um, for over carrying and it's a chance for coach for to relieve their lines Number five, Eamon Murphy. Drives it long. Drives it, he draw Lorna Parker. Fakta, Egmwinter, Dundero and Shane. August Bull to Godass, he draw and Cunha. Coming across again, I think it's Connor. It's, it's uh, not Connor on this occasion, in fact, it's Cronin Riley. And a good ball from Cronin. 
picks out beautifully Ian Costello dangerous raking looking ball from Ian Costello picked up at the second attempt by Mark O'Flynn and under huge pressure from Ollie Connor he drives it towards the sideline on the far side of the field and it will be a chance for Dundera to mount another attack Dundera is shading the exchanges and this is the early part of this game and over there is Sean O'Brien dying to get involved will he pick out his man he does a very good run made by Ian Costello bounces past Dean however pulls in it it's not the best of pulls and it's picked up Ilorna Parker by Aidan Barry Murphy and Aidan drives it long towards uh, the man operating it in the corner forward inside there that's the number two um, David Murphy breaks to the opposite number two sorry break in the far side of the field going for it inside uh, is, the, is the point scorer already for uh, but he's beaten on this occasion by Sean O'Brien and the clearance is a good one it goes towards the centre of the field it goes in the direction of Cronin Riley and Cronin big rangy player very intelligent ball towards the danger man Connor Stannard Connor Stannard running across to meet him was the number 15 the number 15 for Coachford playing in the back line is Ian McSweeney Ian does enough to put the pressure on and there's a chance for Christopher Dennehy to clear his lines and he does and he clears it well in the direction of Alan Hogan Alan delivers a nice ball so soling up the field on the near side is Sam Sam Lynch will be looking for more involvement in the game but does exceptionally well there and gets a good ball in the direction of David Murphy but racing across is the number four again and shepherding it over the line that's Sean O'Brien under a lot of pressure from the boys inside from uh, Kieran Barrett but Kieran could do nothing about that when it goes to the left it goes wide another wide for Coachford and still done a lead by that goal the kick out is taken quickly and taken well uh, by Craig Hackett finds his man and a lovely intelligent ball in the direction of Ian Costello Ian nice short ball to Connor Stallard lovely combination football the return for Ian but unfortunately he can't get it will he get in the second attempt he does bearing down on goal under a lot of pressure can he get any shot maybe soccer style on the ground again blocked by the keeper not a great clearance and a chance for a goal blocked bravely inside by one of the full backs and picked up by uh, Christopher Dennehy and driven to the far side of the field we're racing across not for the first time today as Sean O'Brien ducks inside his man and gives a right footed pass in the direction um, of uh, one of his players and the player in question pops the ball takes a shot a very dangerous looking ball from Connor Stallard but it breaks inside to the number 10 half cleared by half, but well cleared in fact by the goalkeeper who pulled in at first time and a good intelligent clearance comes towards the side of the field to Ollie O'Connor Ollie Connor and uh, it's not Ollie Connor in fact we'll come back it's Alan Hogan and a dangerous ball but well dealt with by Craig Hackett and Craig drives it towards the direction of the sideline on the near side of the field where Ivera hooked I think that's uh, Dara Dara Ring puts it uh, sensibly puts his back down and gets on with a low ball but oh it's caught off by the number four Sean O'Brien and Sean O'Brien gets a good right footed clearance as far as Ian Ian Costello playing very well drives it towards his corner forward hops past the defender and it could hop nicely for Ollie Connor Ollie nice ball across there's a half chance here picked up beautifully and stroke with venom and with power by Killian O'Brien but unfortunately for Killian and much to disappointment I'm sure of Mick Creedon in the far side of the field the ball just goes to the left and wide we get the mentor that's Christy Toomey over there mentor with uh, Coachford himself a very fine footballer in his day with Dunamore and a county winner with them Christy will be a little bit disappointed and concerned I think with how uh, this game is going his side would appear to be playing with the wind in the first half but they trail by that goal one goal and one point to one point here come Dundero again but they're under a lot of pressure and Aidan Barry Murphy tries to get it into his hand he can't but the man who does get it into his hand is Sam Sam Lynch and that's a good ball from Sam deflected out by one of the defender the defender in question is Fergal Fergal Riley and the ball from Fergal hops over the full back inside into the corner forward Ollie who's picking up some nice loose ball, loose ball and he gets one as far as Ian Ian Costello can't get up in the first attempt will he get a second chance he won't and it's picked up by Ian Maxweeney Ian's ball is a good one to Aidan Aidan Barry Murphy intelligent ball but unfortunately
fortunately for Aidan and fortunately for Dara Ring he couldn't hold it and the clearance is, is a good one here come Coatsford again but picking it up is Fergal Riley in his second chance a better kick from Fergal this time Cush going in the direction of one of his players but the player in question is beaten by Eamon Murphy from Coatsford and Eamon gets it towards Dara lovely turn inside by Dara and Dara forcing the foul out of the Dundara player and a chance maybe uh, for Coatsford to do something here long kick from Dara but unfortunately for Dara he's very disappointed with that when it goes well to the left and wide Craig Hackett has kicked out some good ball in the first half hasn't really been tested as a goalkeeper dealt with one ball that came in very very admirably the kick is again towards the wing and again in the direction of one of the hard running Dundera players but the bounce and the ball the ball actually eludes him um, but here come Dundera the second attempt Niall McCarthy Niall under a lot of pressure from Alan Hogan but Niall manages to get the ball up he's very close to the sideline the ball on this occasion is over the sideline and the flag goes up from uh, the linesman Leisman today from Skull the Christian Afe and Mahan lovely ball kicked in the direction of, of, of Ring again and he picks it up well lovely kick but as a just gone over the player inside not a lot going right for Coachford at the moment a good block there however and here they come again and the person of David David Murphy turns beautifully inside looks at the post a beautiful beautiful kick from David Murphy but unfortunately for him unfortunately for Coachford it goes narrowly to the left and wide and still they trail by that all important goal Craig Hackett as the game progressing becoming a little bit busier he drives it again towards the near side of the field again oh, the coach for by getting there first um, is Allen but Allen slips as he tried to get the ball and it goes off his hands and over the sideline the side ball, line ball will be to Dundera and the kick is a very good one from Niall McCarthy tries to pick out his man inside the man he tried to pick out is Ian Costello and Ian Costello unfortunately couldn't uh, get control of the ball that's a brilliant catch inside by ring what can he do with this he's under ferocious pressure from Fergal Riley but he beats him on this occasion takes on the second man bearing down on goal what will he do with it he takes another couple of steps he drives it hard he drives it right footed into the back of the Dundera net and that's a super goal coach for back in level terms the keeper gets on with it quickly maybe too quickly because Sam Lynch has got control of that ball in the middle of the field he's under a lot of pressure from Kean Hackett he gets the ball very nicely to his number two uh, that's uh, David Murphy operating farther out of the field at the moment but back there is one of the Dundera defenders and the clearance is a good one it's a very good one picking out the hard running Ian Costello what will Ian Costello do with this gives it to his midfield partner that's Connor Staller Connor right footed kick it's a good kick from Connor but unfortunately for him it goes to the right and wide and the score remains level 1-1 one, one for Dundera 1-1 one, one for Coatsford the referee calling for the ball on this occasion and uh, has he blown for half time I think in fact he has a super first half very entertaining game 1-1 one, one for Dundera 1-1 one, one for Coatsford Referee Des Mellerick about to throw the ball in. The game pies on a knife's edge. It's 1 1 for Dundera, 1 1 for Coachford. Straight away, Dundera buys into the attack. It's uh, the number six. That's a great kick from me and Costello on the ball straight and through over the bar. And what a start to the second half for Dundero and for the very, very impressive Ian Costello who has really worked his socks off in this game. 
very evenly fought half but played in a great spirit it's 11 aside it's good open stuff and as i've mentioned before parky ring in excellent shape considering we're playing here on the 5th of november it's been of course a marvelous year for games all round the kick out marco flynn very good keeper in the first half would have considered himself unlucky for the goal but has played well Dundero or Saab that's Coachford in the attack Aidan Barry Murphy a good player drives a nice one to the very impressive Dara Ring but the block on this occasion is a good one by Ian Costello and a low intelligent delivery but it's picked up very nicely by Eamon Murphy what can he do with it he's surrounded by three Dundero players but he's fouled by them says Desi Mellerick the referee who's doing an exemplary job so far and the play goes on coach for boy holds his hands to his head he's disappointed with that and well he might be because Connor Stallard is bearing down at him in retribution Connor drives a right footed kick it's a decent looking kick it's straight and through over the bar and then almost immediately the second half starts that deadly duo of Coslo and Stallard both straight into the action scoring two fabulous points and Dundero lead by two the kick out is a good one to the near side of the field. Gives his player every chance of getting to it and getting to it is David, David Murphy. Crossfield ball, lovely ball, got a number four, that's John. John Crowley, low and oh! Drives a pile driver across the goal but unfortunately for him it shaves the upright on the left and goes narrowly wide but a great move by Coachford and they again show us just how dangerous they can be. Umpires retrieving the ball there, the respective mentors enjoying this, if you can enjoy it on such an occasion, of course, for coach or Christy Toomey, I already mentioned with him, is Lyndon Lee of Cork and Camogie and Sunday game fame. But here comes Dundero again, Archer Coachford again, cut off nicely by one of the defenders inside. That, of course, is Connor, Connor Hagerty, and the teamwork is good, the ball driven up the field towards the corner forward line, where racing across is Sam Lynch and Sam collects it well his shot is half blocked however Ian on this occasion Ian Costler couldn't pick it up it goes back to Sam needs a second bite at the cherry running back to help him is Ian McSweeney and Ian McSweeney again it breaks to Ian the other Ian Ian Costler turns inside turns on his right the half block from the defender is sufficient that's well done by John Crowley the man who was up on the other side of the field trying to score a goal on the other uh, about a minute ago he does very well there to block the shot and it goes out for a 45. The number four is Sean O'Brien. Sean goes short to the unmarked Connor Stallard. Connor turns inside, throw the hand, but unfortunately he overdoes it, travels at the ref just as he was being blocked down anyway, and it's going to be a coach for free and going over to take it as Sam Lynch. Coach would probably need a score, they need to do something, and a man who might inspire them is the man in possession, that's Dara. Good ball from Dara in the direction of his number four, that's John Crowley. And John, uh, the ball breaks to the middle of the field to Aidan Barry Murphy. It goes as far now as David, David Murphy. Low kick from David. Can the coach by get it? Under pressure, he knocks it into the corner for the number 10, but it's cut off beautifully inside. Kieran Barrett put in a fisted pass, but it was cut off beautifully by Fergal Riley in his clearance. It's a very good one towards Ian Costello. Ian pulls on the ground on this occasion. He drew uh, on Cunha and the number 12 inside for coach uh, for uh, Dundera. The number 12 is Oliver Connor playing in the corner there. And the kick is a long relieving kick from the Coachford boys. It goes in towards the middle of the field. Racing back, the number five. The number five is Eamon Murphy, who's having a good game. Eamon beaten on this occasion. And a long kick into the direction of the corner forward. Chance here, the ball driven low and agonisingly across the goal. Has it gone wide yet? It has, says the umpire. The man who did it was uh, wearing number... number uh, I can't see who it was at the moment. Um, in the far side, I think it may have been uh, just the, num the number 12, in fact, from Dundero. Um, I have Oli, I'm not sure who the number 12 is. The programme says uh, the programme said number 12, Oliver Connor, but Oliver is down here as number 11 in my team list in front of you. So maybe it's Connor Buckley, maybe it's Oliver Connor. Apologies for that, but meanwhile, the game goes on and it's cut off for Dundera by the outstanding Niall McCarthy. And Niall drives it towards the far side of the field, but a mighty catch in the middle of the field by Murphy. And a great ball inside the ring. Goal! Back at the net. 
straightforward, full-fashioned football. Up go the hands of David Murphy. The delivery is long and good into the danger man. He that's uh, Dara Ring. He didn't have to be asked twice. And once he got possession, well, you knew what was coming. Here comes Dundero again. Can they respond? Back there is Iveratree. Iveratree is Christopher Dennehy, and his clearance is a good one. And it finds John Crowley. John goes intelligently to the far side of the field towards Allen. Alan Hogan under ferocious pressure from Riley, Fergal Riley, and the ball breaks to Sean O'Brien from Gundera, and it's a good long clearance by Sean O'Brien in the direction of his number nine. That's Keen Hackett. Can he get Keen get possession? He can under pressure from Christopher Dennehy, but he gets a ball towards Ian Costello. Ian Costello, beautiful turn. Can he get it on his favourite right foot? He can. He drives it high, he drives it straight, and drives it over the bar, and the sides level again. Again. Two goals and a point for Coatsford, one goal and four points for Dundero. The game is back in progress, in the middle of the field, under pressure, too much pressure says the referee is Eamon Murphy and the free will be for Coatsford. Fine open game of football as we've said before, but balance on a knife edge and that's a good ball. Uh, or a good interception, I beg your pardon, by Ian Costello. Here he comes again. Great engine this boy has. Can he finish? Takes on another man. Wants to put it on his right. Puts it beautifully on his right. And caresses the ball almost over the bar for another fabulous point from Ian Costello, who's having a towering game for Dundero. Great response by the, the boys from the southeast. Marco Flynn goes towards the far side of the field, goes intelligently in the direction of Christopher Dennehy. Christopher, nice ball as far as John, John Crowley. Good ball from John to the man who made the goal, that's David Murphy and David Fowl. Will he go along with this? I suspect he might. We'll see, he won't go along. In fact, he's leaving it to Sam Lynch. Sam Lynch drives it long, but drives it towards the corner, racing out for Dundero is their number two, another very fine player, Fergal Riley, and Fergal this time will be a bit disappointed with his clearance, it goes over the sideline on the far side of the field where I see Mick Creedon and Lynn Dunley shouting uh, directions to their respective um, teams, the ball back in play and here come the boys from Dundero again, that's uh, Connor, Connor Stallard, great run by him, Will he give that ball off? He's going for the score himself. In fact, he beautiful tip inside a run. A lovely pass from Collar into the number 11. The 11, as listed here in my team, this is Ollie Connor. And Ollie sticks it calmly into the back of the net. And suddenly there's daylight between the teams again. 2 5 for Dundero, 2 1 for Coachford. And again, it's Marco Flynn with that kick out ball intercepted by the number nine the number nine for Dundero is Keane Hackett he drives a good one the hands of the number 15 the number 15 from Coachford go up and it's uh, there's a referee signals a free as uh, the number 15 for Coachford is Ian McSweeney Ian gets the ball as far as his number eight that's ring lovely layoff from him in the direction of John John Crowley back to David Murphy David under pressure bearing down on goal, surrounded by two players, gets a pass, his pass goes as far as Christopher Dennehy operating further out the field, but not a great ball, but a great interception from Dundera playing, well that's a superb block however by Eamon Murphy from Coatsford, can that inspire his team, one feeds if they get possession, there is a goal in these boys, uh, Sam Lynch drives it towards the half forward line, where it's picked up nicely inside by Kieran Barrett, on shot is intercepted by the Dundera players inside and the clearance is a long one and it's a good one and that Dundera player that did that I'm sure I can't see his number it looked very much like the style of Niall McCarthy good ball as far as Ian Costello Ian this time doesn't get his best uh, shot in perhaps tiring a little bit in this wide pitch and the ball goes to the left and wide keeper in a hurry to get on with it his clearance isn't a great one and it's picked up uh, for Dundera by Iveran A. Keen Hackett. Keen's shot goes to the right, goes wide, and another chance perhaps for Marco Flynn to clear better and make perhaps make amends for that last clearance. I mentioned already, of course, I mentioned uh, some of the mentors already. I didn't mention the, the second mentor in the line over there with. Uh, with Dundera, that's Helen Kelleher, all the way from Newtown, Shandron, whose brother, of course, plays with, uh, who 
Coach Brother plays with the Newtown Chandon Senior Hurling team. That's a dangerous ball going in. The hands go up and the coming out very well is the number six. That's Sam Lynch who's playing a good second half. And David Murphy was beginning to get very involved. But again, Fergal Riley comes to make that interception. Fergal Riley bends his back, does very well and get a good long ball across giving it at that's torn the direction of being Costello. Ball breaks in fact to Connor. Connor Staller bearing on goal. Can he finish? He strikes that ball well. But unfortunately for Connor, this one goes to the left and wide. Coachford on the attack. Great kick out and it reaches uh, Eamon Murphy who's playing well. Nice ball from Eamon inside to his inside forward. That's uh, the number nine inside for Co that for Coachford. The number nine for Coachford. I look for his name already. That's Jack Crowley and Jack beaten on this occasion, but it goes back as far as Sam and Sam goes long. But again, the safe hands of McCarthy are there. Niall McCarthy playing a stormer. Ball pulled out of Niall McCarthy's hands. He wants to take the free himself. He looks up. He goes in the direction of his midfielders and he finds them. It's not his midfielder on this occasion. He finds but Tronan Riley. Cronin, nice little hand pass inside to Connor. Connor bearing down on goal, wants to put it in his right, hits a beautiful little dinky shot with the outside of his right leg and increases to them their lead and now lead by five points. Score two goals and six points for Dundero, two goals and one point for Coatsford. Coatsford not giving up yet, not giving up the fight. David Murphy in possession, long ball from David Murphy in towards the corner forward the aforementioned Jack Crowley and the ball driven long by John Crowley in the direction of the man who can score a goal lovely turn inside what a save second chance and the ball is in the back of the net the ball is in the back of the Dundera net and we said it before there could be a sting in the tail yet this time ball went inside to the number eight the number eight inside was Dara Ring Dara couldn't finish but picked up the rebound and slotted it home bearing down however it's Ian back in the head Ian Costello for Dundero what a response and just as we thought we had an exciting finish on our hands straight down the field came to Dundero boys what a better player if he wanted someone to get possession than Ian Costello and he drives the ball to the back of the net and so the five point gap opened up again Coachford in possession, they won't give up. The ball is long in the direction of a Coachford player and the man that has it is the number four, John Crowley, who's in a very good second half. Surrounded again by two Dundera plays. Does very well, what can he do here? Cuts back inside, is fouled, says the referee. Wants to get on with it quickly. Might be advised, uh, well, I'm not sure how much left. There can't be a lot of time in this, but uh, time ticking away. Will they go for a goal? Will Dennis um, Dara Ring be content to put this over the bar? He goes for it, I think. Strikes it very well, but strikes it over the bar. Gap now, just four points. The kick out, getting on with it as Craig Hackett. And a nice ball, but it's cut up, picked out very well by Christopher Dennehy. Christopher, crossfield ball in the direction of John Crowley. John had a good run there for that last free, but a lovely piece of intercepting played by Fergal Riley. But a block is a good one uh, by Aidan Barry Murphy. And Aidan in turn is blocked by his opposite number, Connor Stallard. And Connor under a lot of pressure. Uh, is he fouled? He's now play on, says the referee. Drives it towards his forward line. The hands uh, go up the hands of Sam Lynch, but he doesn't hold it. And it could fall inside for Costello here again. And it's in for Costello. Is there another goal on here? There is. Ian Costello, what a player, gets position and possession and strikes the ball beautifully to the back of the net and there's a very happy looking duo on the far side of the field, Mick Creedon and Helen Kelleher. As I said, we've had great pairings, we've had Darby and Joan and we've had Bonnie and Clyde and we've Mick and Helen and Dundero. The ball goes to the centre of the field, it's picked up for Coachford. And soloing on with it is John Crowley. Long ball from John, but not for the first time today, intercepted by Fergal Riley. Fergal falls to the ground and the ball breaks loose. But going back to get it uh, a 
again uh, is Niall McCarthy helped it must be said by Connor Stallard and the clearance is a good one it goes over the sideline on the far side of the field but there's plenty of respite there one feels at this stage that Dundera have done enough to win this game it's been a pulsating match end to end stuff full of good open football but in here comes the man who has probably caused more damage than anybody else can he finish with another score that's Ian Costello goes for a little chip inside it's a good little chip because it finds one of his players the save is a good one the save is a brave one by Mark O'Flynn and the referee I think uh, will probably he may throw that up I'm difficult from here to see what happened but Mark O'Flynn was very very good and very very brave as the pressure mounted on him there the umpires, one of the umpires seems to be calling Christy Toomey over to have a look at him. Um, good piece of goalkeeping. The goal certainly acts at the mercy of the Dundera forward, but the keeper down bravely uh, to take uh, the ball and I would imagine probably possibly a boot in the face. with the play and it's in the possession of uh, Connor Stallard and unlucky for Connor the ball goes off the outside of the post and wide see a number of Dundera subs are seeing a bit of action I see inside there Colm O'Connell and uh, I think that may be Connor Buckley inside there as well at the ball and uh, the ball as it goes to the right and wide chance for those boys to play here in Parky Ring and their school's very big day here they come again, but with that, referee Des Mellerick blows the final whistle and Dundera are the champions and the score of four goals and six points for three goals and two points in this highly entertaining Allianz Skeenaskull DF4 football final. Well,